What up, dudes? I gotta be honest, I don't feel great. <laughs> uh, I really don't feel great today. And I've spent most of my day indoors, which is just the wrong thing to do. When you're feeling bad, don't stay indoors. It goes against everything I've always said. It's like, go outside, be in nature. I also overate. I usually don't eat before I film these videos because I like to be on an empty stomach. It kind of keeps my mind alert. And I, I went against my rules there. I did that. Basically, today is not working out for me. It's very humid today, so I feel I feel compressed again. I've been having some chest pains also. You guys remember this building from yesterday? From yesterday's video? This like abandoned cottage over there? Somebody in the comments said, can you can you like explore it for us and show us around? So uh, sure, yes I can. That's the beauty of daily vlogging is that we can get this immediate kind of interaction and then anything you want me to do, I can do it the next day. <laughs> All right, let's go inside. the only door that wasn't locked. It's a mess in here. Small horseshoes. All this old stuff. hole in the ground. Bird's nest in the roof. So some of the furniture is still in here. I don't want to scare the bird. But the electricity is still on. It's freaking out that I'm in here. I need to get out before I scare it. There's a layer of poop on the ground as well. Okay. Being so light on my feet. On the roof. Picture frames. Oh wow. The writing school on the wall there. There's a huge bird's nest in, in the fireplace there. I was trying to keep quiet in there because I don't want to startle all the birds. Now that the rain stopped, it's been raining all day. Now that the rain stopped, the birds are everywhere. I think they're starlings, I'm pretty sure. I, I, might, I might be wrong. I don't know too much about birds. You guys can probably tell I'm not I'm not so full of energy today. <laughs> I think I'm feeling slightly, slightly overwhelmed. Not by YouTube, by just by with the way my life is going right now like i'm doing better physically and emotionally than i have in, in a long time as a result all these po all these opportunities are coming my way they're all kind of clashing with each other and like i've gone from doing nothing in wales for months to now being given all these opportunities and i'm kind of just slightly overwhelmed overwhelmed by choice and i want to do all of the things i have to put a lot of work in to make the things happen. I'm, I'm being too cryptic, I shouldn't really talk. Like I'm making summer plans and I'm just kind of a little overwhelmed by the summer plans because it's not so clear anymore because of this clo this this lockdown issue, the virus issue, things are different now. Like I can't just decide to go from A to B. If I want to travel I can't just do that anymore. I have to now go from A to B to C to D 
to avoid police. <laughs> it's like, and how long do I have to try and do that? Basically, I was supposed to be sailing to Portugal in March. We were about to catch the train and then all of a sudden there's mandatory lockdown. Everyone has to go in. So I didn't get to go sailing. And now the sailing opportunities come back. But now we have to be a bit, a bit more sneaky because we want to leave the UK and go to another country, but we don't know if that country will accept us because of the COVID thing. I'm going to just try not to th overthink about the future because none of that matters. Like, I'm living in this moment right now. This is the only, only moment that ever is going to exist. Not to think about other stuff. If you guys are willing, I just want to kind of just let things off of my mind, like speak to someone. I just want to release some stuff, I guess. This thing right here, this little tool, this toxic little little device. It's great, it's a camera, it's a pocket camera. That's why I carry it around all the time because I love doing Instagram stories. Each week you get like a, it tells you how long you spent on your phone. And last week I spent six hours plus with my screen on. That's, that's too much. Six hours plus a day, sorry. Like six hours a day with my screen on, whether or not I'm looking at it or if I'm just watching YouTube on it or something like that, it's still six hours of mobile time. Like that's too much. Like it was down to three or four hours last week. And then the week that I just passed, it's gone up to six again. It kind of correlates with the weather. The weather's been worse this last week, so I haven't been out as much, but that's still too much. You know, like if I'm not looking at my phone, I'm on my computer. I think all of that screen staring is really pulling me out of reality because I'm living in digital worlds. Worlds where really nothing matters. Like anything goes in the digital world because it's not physical, you can really do anything in there. And I feel like I'm being sucked into it too much that I'm losing touch with reality. Like being out here with nature, it still doesn't feel real. I feel like I'm still living some strange fantasy, but it's like an uncomfortable fantasy. I think I need people around me that I don't see every day to kind of snap, snap me back. I need someone that I haven't seen in a long time to come and like pinch me because I feel like I, I'm still dreaming. While I was walking up here, I had an idea that I wanted to share some of the dreams that I've written down this past uh, couple months because I've been writing my dreams down for about a year now and I have a lot of a lot of reoccurring things come up so I would like to share some if that's okay with you guys like you guys seem to enjoy when I shared that last one about my friend and the poop story somebody said in the comments on my last video the video yesterday that I what a what a blessing it is to be able to hike the hill that I was complaining about. I was complaining about the mountain being too small and not challenging enough. And they were saying how privileged you are to be able to say that. Some people can't even physically go up a mountain. And I hadn't really considered that before. Like, yeah, of course, who am I to complain? I've got legs that work. I have lungs that work. Like, who am I to complain about this kind of stuff? It was kind of weird just like, vlogging next to death. It's just underneath me right now, it's just a skull. Yeah, let's move. Let's go to a different location. I feel uneasy. This abandoned house, because I, don't, I don't know the story behind it. Why would someone abandon their farmhouse? Sort of the biggest thing about me posting every day is that you guys will now see what my mood shifts are like. Like, I'm not the same mood one day and, and the other day. Oftentimes I'll have weeks where I just feel, feel suppressed. Like inside, I feel like something's stopping me from being myself and being happy. Weeks, sometimes weeks. You guys would never see that because I'd be able to hide it. But now that I'm posting every day, I can't hide the way I feel anymore. And sometimes I do just want to talk to someone about things. I was thinking that this past year, outside of the festival and outside of living in Germany, I've only spent time with two people who I would consider friends that aren't in my family in a year. Two people. My friend Hagen came to visit me in Germany. I cherish him a lot. He came to visit right before he was going to Japan. And Seanad, Seanad came to visit me in February, I think, right after I got back from Germany. We went for a walk together. And like, those are really the only two friends I've seen outside of Azora. And that was last August or July or something. Like, this is probably the loneliest year I've ever had. So yeah, when I, when I say that I'm really struggling, it's not just the COVID thing. When I broke up with Mowgli, I, I didn't want to leave the house for three months. I didn't post anything. I was really just going inside my head and not feeling great. And then I managed to get out of that. And I was like, sweet, I'm ready to go see people again, go hang out with people, make some make some friends, make some memories. And, and then all this happened. And of course, all of this is memory. Like I'm still doing things. It's just not what I was expecting, I guess. I think I need to take a break from my phone. Like really take a break. Because I spent, spent a lot of time unconsciously on my phone. Like I'm not making cons conscious decisions. I'm just kind of scrolling aimlessly and glancing at it constantly. 
And I don't know what it is. I, I know it's a psychological thing. It happens to a lot of people. Like, mm -hmm. It's kind of the same as gambling, where you, you're constantly pulling that slot machine until you win, or potentially win. I guess the same, it's, it works the same way as the phone. It's like you constantly check it to see if you have a notification. And then that notification gives you a slight dopamine boost. And it's so subtle that we don't notice. Well, I don't notice. Why do I need it? I don't need dopamine from a little red notification. I don't need it. I don't want it either. Like, but I keep checking my phone because it's, it's taking over my conscious brain. My, all my uncon unconscious brain. And it's just making me do this thing. I think I need to take a break from... I don't know how to continue my social presence without a phone. I'll have to do a lot more on my computer. and I, I can still post on Instagram and stuff on my computer. But yeah, I need to take my phone and take it out of the equation for a while. So that's one thing. That's just, like, I hope you guys are all right with me just talking. I'll share some of my dreams in a minute. I just want to like get some stuff off my chest. I'm worried that if I don't get out of way soon, my mental will go, go to crap again. And I've spent so many months getting myself back to a good mental state. I don't want it to all be jeopardized because I, I'm on lockdown. Another thing about socials is when I'm on Instagram, I, I see my American friends' Instagram stories and they're all hanging out together. They're, they're, they're all with like groups of people. And it's like, how come America gets to do that and we're still not allowed over here? Just doesn't, they don't really understand. Lockdown is all in our heads. They're trying to control us with fear. And if I don't subscribe to that, if I, if I decide I want to do my own thing, and just face the consequences, if any, then I can do that. Like, it's a new week, it's a Monday. This week is now decision week for me. Do I stay here another seven days doing basically nothing? Or do I go to England, pick up a car, go do solstice with some people, and then start hiking? If I go pick up the car, I'm not coming back to Wales. I think I'll stay and live in the car for a while. Like, am I prepared to do that? I would love to go from house to house and visit friends, but like, are people going to want to see me because of this dumb virus thing? The last point I'm going to make about my phone and social media and just the internet and the way, why I feel the way I do is I've been getting so deep into the, the black hole of conspiracies and, and news. Like, even though I don't watch the news, I'm still consuming Reddit. I'm still consuming Twitter like, and Instagram and stuff. And everybody's posting the same things the news are posting. So it's like I can't really avoid it without disconnecting from my phone. And I feel like I have a responsibility to not disconnect. I feel like I should be that beacon of light in these dark times, like try and inspire people to create or to get outside, try and put people in a better mood so they can avoid all this crap. So I feel like I can't just disconnect and leave every, like leave everyone that's following me just in the dark. Like I don't want you guys to get as consumed as I have. But it's kind of also my job to kind of stay on top of these topics and understand them and do the research so you guys don't have to. But it's really taking a toll on my mental, so I don't think I can continue. I think I need to disconnect and just really make stuff unrelated to what's going on in the world. I believe the media is winning when it comes to me. I think they've, they've won. They've got me in a lower, low vibrational state where I'm constantly overthinking about people I don't know and about invisible viruses. Like These things don't usually consume me so much because I, I just I don't pay attention. But now I'm, I have not... I have no choice but to sit indoors and pay attention to it. And like they've won, they've, they've, they've got my brain and I want it back. I, I would really like to get into nature and just camp out for a while and hike for a, a while. But I also want to keep posting every day on my channel. So that's my predicament is that if I wasn't posting every day, I would be in a, in a tent somewhere or I'd be in my hammock somewhere. So I feel like this week, if I decide to go pick up a car and live in that, I can still probably get a video up every day. I would just need to find a power source to charge my laptop. That's it, that's all I need. And my camera batteries. And yeah, if I could do that, I can still post every day. I started this uploading every day in June because I thought I was gonna be stuck in lockdown for another month. And I wanted something to kind of keep my brain active. And now it's limiting me in a way. <laughs> or maybe I'm overthinking and I'm just... Well, I, I've done daily vlogs before. I know how difficult it is when you're on the road and you're trying to upload every day. Like I would go to Starbucks and sit there for two hours in the morning trying to upload a vlog. I don't want to do that again. The Starbucks is even, isn't even open right now, so... Yeah, I don't know. Predicament. I'm following a cheap trail. I'm trying to get to another spot where I can sit.
Something I can say though is that just by being outside for the for the like 45 minutes that I've been out here, I already feel much better. But I still kind of feel like I'm in a daze. Like I feel drowsy. I don't know. It's very hard to describe. <laughs> right, so I'm not going to read any of my dreams because. I write them down in notes form, like bullet points. That I don't really write sentences that would make sense to read. But basically, I, I read through a few of them. And a lot of reoccurring things are... I'm at a festival setting. And it's not a festival that I recognize, ever. So I'm guessing that happens because... Festival is where I'm happiest, probably. Because it's like a social overload. It's You're stimulated. Every sense is stimulated. Touch, smell, sight, sound. And you get to just like connect with the most beautiful people and so many of them so going from like this nothing to just thousands of people like it's it's always left good memories and i think that's why i keep going back to those places and i'm always at the festivals with someone sometimes i'm tripping sometimes i'm not and it's usually old friends people i've been close to people i've connected with on like a deep deep spiritual level people I've tripped with will often show up and I just I don't know why it's those people because they're not the kind of people I think about all the time if dreams work by using subconscious memories then it would all make sense it's like these are people that I care about deeply and they're at the back of my mind all the time if it doesn't work that way and we go to another place and we live out a different life then why is it that I'm always either in abandoned buildings or a festival setting I don't know why it's though always those and it's not very often that I we use speech in the dream world. Well, I don't anyway. I don't know what language we do use. I guess it's just like some sort of telepathy. I don't remember many dreams where I do do use words. But yeah, anyway, I'm gonna keep writing my writing down my dreams. Sometimes it's difficult to even write them down. I only catch a few a month, but I'm really trying. I'm like throwing the net out there each night. If I notice anything significant, I will update you guys. I think the title of this video is gonna be like how to combat anxiety or something like that. How to how to deal with how to help an anxiety, something like that. That's what the title of this video is going to be. The few things that I, I do is, if I'm feeling anxious in any way, I'll try to unclench all my muscles. It's my jaw, my fingers, like sometimes I tense up my hands, or my shoulders kind of tense up. I'll try and untense everything, like make a conscious decision to make everything kind of loosey-goosey. Um, that helps, that's the first thing I do. Uh, well, the first thing to do is just be aware that you're you're getting anxious. If you're not aware of it, it will take over. Uh, so become aware of it. Loosen up. Sometimes you need to change your setting. So if you're indoors and some things are getting overwhelming, go outside. Another thing would just be go outside in general. If you go out into nature, nature is calm. Nature moves at a much slower pace than we are used to in this instant digital world that we're living in. Trees take years to grow, but they're moving all the time. So yeah, come outside. That really helps slow you down, calms the mind. There's less noise. Um, I would say get into nature, if you're in a city, try and find a park, just somewhere where you can be quiet. And then if your mind is still racing, like try to meditate. I say try because sometimes even meditation is difficult, especially when you're anxious. But try. That was the first thing I did in this video, so I went and sat and just meditated for a little bit. Just be aware that you aren't your thoughts. Your thoughts are just chatter, just chatter in the brain. Like, they don't define you, they're not your identity. You can you can be stronger than them. So whatever those thoughts are, whatever the anxious feelings are, like you are not them. They are not you. They're just thoughts. I can see a horse. There's been a lot of horses this week. What's up with that? I usually never see horses. Now they're everywhere. Uh, I guess the last thing would be just find someone that you can talk to, someone that you really care about, and someone that cares about you. Just share that you're feeling not so good, that you're kind of anxious. I don't really know anything about anxiety attacks because I don't really get anxiety attacks. So I can't help in that sense, but it, I do get anxious about things and engulfed by thoughts. Yeah, talking to someone. That person to me is you guys. Like, I really don't have that one person I can go text about everything. Like, maybe Steph or my friend Sanaz. I could probably message those guys, but even still, sometimes I don't feel comfortable even doing that. Yeah, you guys are really. You're all that I got right now. Yeah, sorry to bring the mood down today. I guess I can't really fake it, like, I'm human, I'm not always feeling great, hopefully it doesn't last, hopefully tomorrow I can do things different. Today I didn't take my cold shower, that was one thing I did wrong, I woke up late, didn't take a cold shower.
in yesterday's video, I made an Amazon wish list. Like, I've never done anything like that before. And I basically just asked, anyone that is more fortunate than, than I, basically any rich people out there, <laughs> would you like to help me get the few pieces of equipment that I still don't have? Yeah, this guy, Fast Eddie on Discord, came through. So shout out to Fast Eddie. He bought me the uh, the green screen outfit. So yeah, expect some memes with that. Basically, my head will still be out, but my whole body will be green screen, and I can walk around and vlog, and then change it and post it to anything I want. I can also live stream, and you guys can change what it looks like. I think it's gonna be so fun. The rest of the people on my Discord were saying, instead of like relying on one person to like get me a drone, why don't I live stream and make it like a a donation goal. Like I can, I can just stream for however long all the donations would go into buy your drone. Now I really like that idea. I'm just kind of quite, I'm not so comfortable with live streaming. So I'll just have to like, I'll have to do a few tests, test streams to kind of get back into it. Cause live streaming is really not my thing. I, I prefer these kind of alone time with the camera, with my audience, my dudes, my magic mushies. But yeah, I like that idea. So that's for sure something I will do. So if no pressure to anyone to spend ridiculous amounts of money on me. I will live stream and then people can just throw like a dollar or two at me and then we'll build it up. This week is my decision week. I really have to decide if I want to, if I want to let my mental get worse or if I want to do something about it. This week I'll also be updating my website so that the store will look nice and fresh again. I'll add some new items on there. I want to be making amethyst necklaces again so I'll, I'll buy some amethyst this week and then do that. I'll have something to take my mind off of just videos all the time because I do love creating with my hands. Like it's not it's not so satisfying just going like click 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 click. I like to tie knots and cut things and you know it makes other stuff. I appreciate you guys. If you made it this far into the video just put a love heart in the comments. It could be any kind of love heart you want. Just share some love down there for each other. Not just for me you know like there's other people out there struggling. I'm just the one broadcasting it I guess. I'm very fortunate to have a house, have a roof over my head, have food. I can afford to feed myself. I'm very lucky in that sense. Anybody else out there is struggling, like you can you can spill your thoughts in the in the comments. Like I will be down there, I'll talk to all of you guys. I generally spend my nights and my mornings replying to comments. So if you're ever trying to reach me, down there is the best place to do it. I'm gonna go edit this. This will be up tonight so you guys will see this in a few hours. Thank you for your time. Leave a like on the video if you want. Um, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. We're gonna be indoors tomorrow, I think. We're gonna make a... I've got a few ideas for tomorrow. The sunset's pretty awesome. I'll turn the camera around and show you. Yeehaw. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. And I will see you tomorrow.